mainly in Cowbridge, actually. Um, so uh, we're, we're waiting, waiting for this to sort of get online, and they're ready to start. So, uh, Richard, if you come, if you come out for, um, well, you, you'll know if uh, yeah. patterns. Um, so, right, I've got to. I just got to get something sorted on you. Right. Okay. Good. Right. Any news from anybody this week? Nothing from me. Not me. Okay. Well, nothing from you, Peter. Okay. What? What about? What about you, um, uh, Ruth? Anything from you? Nothing I can think of. That no. Nothing I can think of. And Kate, you're going to have to make this up because I need I need you to kill a minute. So um, go on, Kate. Any 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 news from you this week? <laughs> there was something in the news. Some Roman something found somewhere. I think <laughs> in a Bovis Holmes site or something. But I, I'm afraid it, it wasn't riveting, so I can't remember the detail. I think it's nearby somewhere, somewhere in South Wales, but I could be wrong. Where oh, okay. Yeah, nearby. Um, nearby. Well, what? What nearby? Just a, just like ten miles. Like in away, the Vale somewhere. Know. Like in, like in the Vale somewhere. Thanks. If you, if we Google yeah. it now, we, we'll probably see it. Right. Okay. 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 Right. All right. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna do my. Just gonna do my thing. We we just done a. We just done a video this week. Um, the first one on the tower, um, uh, over. Over the docks, we're we're gradually getting that out there, so that's good. And the reason why there's been lots of reasons why there's been a delay. Um, and also, I put another video out there about Maury and Hex Williams as well. I so, saw. Um, Bravo. Yeah, good. I'm just trying to, uh, well, you know, trying trying to fit him in with everything. And um, th there was there was something there was something that Brian Luxon told me years ago that uh, th this 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 guy th this guy had. Um, done lots of archaeological work actually but he kept all the stuff in his head so when he died the places that he excavated and all the finds and everything we don't know what the hell happened to any of it so um that that's not good so we we are going to we, we are going to start from where we left off last week um we're going to go back to cowbridge and um I, i'm going to I'm going to say the usual. We come to that time of the month, so if you can get your uh, your twenty five pounds over uh, for the classes, um, that would be greatly appreciated. So that'll be twenty five pounds each for the classes going through into uh, what? I thought it was thirty. Where am I getting that from? Oh, that you're getting back. You're going to get that from the new Barry class. Oh, when we go back. Well. Technically, um, we're keeping the online one going. So, um, um, you know, Richard won't be coming if it's raining. Uh, Peter will be unlikely going to Barry. So the online Kate won't be coming to the Barry main one either. So um, we, we'll be keeping the online and won't be coming. So the online one will be keeping going. So so that's £30 will be for the next month, but that'll be a separate class. So twenty five pounds well, for four pounds. So it's twenty five, twenty four pounds. No, start again. Twenty five pounds for this class, and that'll be for next month, right? Okay, let's get started. Um, Pete, Pete Pete's hoping that I'll forget to ask him, but uh, that's life, right? So um, yeah. we're going to go straight to the gallery. Uh, we're going to um, here. And if you can remember, a recap on what we were doing last week. We were looking at the Roman street. Roman building um, on the main on the main high street in Cowbridge. And the Roman building on the main high street in Cowbridge um, in 1977, when they excavated it in 1978, um, there, there was the remains of two Roman buildings, post holes, evidence, walls, ditches. Um, and that was that was associated with um, the Roman era occupation of, of Cowbridge. That's what we did. And and that that's to be found. That wouldn't be found today, but it's it's underneath the uh, the the old Yorkshire. Now the Cowbridge Building Society site uh, on the on the high street of Cowbridge opposite uh, the new hall. 
uh, which is uh, before you get to the pub a little bit further on that leads you into uh, Westgate. So you're on the high street. So this is the building that we're looking at. I mentioned that there, there were coins found, uh, there was rubbish found, and um, I wanted to show you an image of some of the artifacts that they actually found, um, Roman artifacts. And that, that's where we're going to go now. So if we can have some focus and um, some concentration. Now, this is some of the material that was actually found from the, the excavation. And the material in the right hand corner is Roman Samian ware. Um, and that's a Roman tile, which is really, really interesting, important to our discussion today. Um, and what, what you've got there, you've got a weight, a Roman weight. Um, and you've got a, a bone button, obviously, um, a clay pipe that's obviously going to be for much later, and you've got bone pins as well. So that's just that's just a few of the artifacts, not 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 many by a long chalk of the imagination. Um, so let's start. So the large quantities of, of coarse pottery came to light, typical coarse pottery, and um, um. I haven't got an example of that on on my on my slide at this minute, but basically coarse grains, rough surfaces, mortarium for mixing bowls. Um, that's obviously another type of Roman material that we find a lot of. Roman alf amphora evidence, um, narrow necks, that type of thing. Um, a substantial, again, a substantial quantity of Roman Samian ware was also found, and that's this material. Now, that is really interesting because Roman Samian ware pottery is usually found associated with um, Roman sites that are in the date range of about between 100 and 150 odd years AD. So that sort of dates this site with actually finding, without actually needing to find any coin evidence. So we know that the, some of the layers were laid down around that time. Uh, other layers from lots of the evidence that that's been excavated uh, we've got roman coins from the 270s from the roman um reign of tetricus now interesting enough they, they they found several fragments of glass vessels were found ranging from simple square bottles to ornate bowls um and again this is all glass evidence is old roman glass evidence again um several fragments of glass vessels um simple square bottles um to ornate bowls were discovered three glass counters were also discovered obviously all from roman date so this is again fascinating so the coins that we mentioned last week were obviously were, were coins um from from I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you the coin dates as well. So, the the the, the coin dates themselves, if I can get the evidence, is from Emperor Trajan dying by one one seven A.D. and Domitian, who uh, was a predecessor to Trajan, who died in ninety six A.D. But we've obviously got coins all the way through to the Roman reign of Tetricus in the to the two seventies. So those are the coins, pins as well. Um, you know, though describe pins like this, bone pins. A spatula um, um, doesn't need um, explanation there. A, a brooches, finger rings, bracelet was also discovered, and a brass statue of Lloyd George. The majority were in an advanced state of corrosion and are now receiving um, expert treatment and are ended up in the National Museum of Wales. They found nails, clamps, um, clamps to clamp wood together, uh, the majority of which played parts in construction. And naturally, um, interesting enough, no images of these at all. But um, and obviously, when we're talking about um, metal objects, you've got um, a weight there. And I'm presuming that that weight must be bronze, a bronze weight. Um, they, they found uh, many bones on the site, uh, wrote, um, evidence of feasting. When I say feasting, normal food, not feasting in that sense. Um, Any more bones to give an insight into the diet and... Um, coming across um, a red antler, which might indicate that they ate um, meat from deer. So, so obviously going into this, um, they they had various pins with ornate heads, which which are these ones, bone pins. Um, and earlier on, obviously, when when we um, when I mentioned the pins, 
um, from which were bronze, they would have looked very similar to this. So the, these these are bone ones, um, and they they've got little small counters that have been found, um, wedge shaped uh, fingers of bone with highly polished ends. So so bone was being worked on site, and also two fragments of a rotary quern. Right, so so that that's that's equally fascinating. Uh, fragments of a rotary quern. Um, now, going down to this little object down into the corner, and we shouldn't actually um, disregard um, that, but that that's a medieval jug, right? So we won't do that yet. So that that's a um, that's a piece of Roman tile, military tile. They found lots of bits of. Tegula, which are the normal roof pan tile, and imbrex, which are the um, uh, half circle um, roof tiles as well, which would go um, along um, the joins of the imbrex, um, you know, typical sort of um, um, continental type roofing material, which which I would hasten to add were probably not, not perfectly placed within the British climate, particularly if you used it today including one that bore the um, affin affirmim of this, the Second Legion Augusta. So this means that the military unit based at Kalian was not a normal auxiliary unit, was actually a Roman legionary unit. And a Roman legionary unit, the Second Augusta Legion was, was uh, elected and raised from the elite of the Roman army. And the second Augusta Legion, oh, sorry, I've got to put the fire on a minute. The second Augusta Legion was one of the legions that, that would have been um, the, one of the first to come over uh, with Emperor um, Claudius. Now, this, this means that the military base or the military establishment um, in, in the likes of Cowbridge, Bovium, would be established roughly by about 80 years A.D., so the discoveries at this site are 75 um, High Street and not to be viewed in isolation. They're part of a whole Roman town, right? Um, and for records of an earth and the Roman material in Calvary date back to the construction of the town hall. So what we've got, the the um, the town hall itself um, uh, from the, the town hall opposite, right? The, 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 the new hall. Um, they were finding Roman material then when they when they would when they're digging that up. Um, and also we know that, for example, the center of Cowbridge, where you've got the old hall, uh, which is that nice grand building on the high street in uh, opposite the entrance to Waitrose, uh, which Pete goes to. Pete goes to the Waitrose in, in Cowbridge. He doesn't shop anywhere else. Um, um, and uh, we, we've got lots of Roman evidence spread out, including um which we which i don't know if we've got time to do this today but uh, we we might look at the arthur john car park excavations which which are uh, which are behind all this um if anyone knows the arthur john's car park you'll you'll know uh, that the there's the arthur john merchant there where you can get posts animal food um and and uh, various other bits and pieces tools so um we, it's it's likely as well one one of the things that, that may have been the first the first pieces of evidence of of romanization in cowbridge would have been that ditch that that ditch would have been constructed first going all the way um running along the modern high street which you can't see naturally um and that would have aligned um, the roman metal alignment um i don't think it was the big hefty slabs you know with gravel underneath and various layers of of graded gravel and sand and all the rest of it it was probably quite a crude surface um alongside a roman ditch and, th and there would have been a margin between the roman ditch and the road of maybe two or three meters or so or, so, or maybe more Anne's just joined us uh richard get let yeah. Anne on yeah sure. good yeah thanks rich don't worry about it um so uh so this is this 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 these buildings themselves these buildings themselves represent a civil settlement not a military building because the military buildings would have actually been where the arthur john's car park is 
that that's what we found so so the military were there first and then like any uh, civil settlement as the native populations of wales just rolled over and accepted the roman era rule as 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 if you see any of my work yeah, that's what i'm saying um no such thing as the existence of the Siluris, because that's a name that was invented after the Roman period. These were individual tribal groupings, if you read my book, Romans in South Wales. Um, and the, these people would have just taken and become Romanized um, in the Roman ilk. Um, and these would have been the people, as the Roman military moved out of Cowbridge, these would have been the people who would have actually occupied uh, the locality. So it was like a, um, a a people that that were Romanized, but most of the people, ninety nine percent of the people living in Cowbridge by around one hundred AD, AD were actually local people, right? They were local. Um, uh, we don't know their tribal name or anything like that. We we don't know what they would have called themselves, um, but they would have lived in in Cowbridge. Um, it is possible that this settlement spread from an original nucleus besides the river which is a little bit away from, which is over 100 metres away from here towards the east, um, uh, just beyond uh, where the town hall is, uh, the old town hall. Um, and going back to the going back to that tile as well, that one single tile, uh, the discovery of the Legion 2nd Augusta stamp tile um, um, offers a founding date for the site of tells us that this was established by the Roman military. And actually, there is one thing about the, the landscape of Cowbridge. There's been very little found in the way of prehistory, um, very little found in the way of prehistory um, in um, in Cowbridge. So it's like it may be very likely that Cowbridge was, in fact, indeed established um, by, by the Roman military. Um, and then obviously the local civilians move in. So um, this throws new light on an old problem, right? And, um, you know, lots of people used to argue that um, Bovium or the name Bomium, uh, which is spelled in both ways, B-O-M-I-V-M or U-M or B. Um, or Bovium, B O V I U or V M. Um, now, up until up until the nineteen seventies, they they truly believed that Bovium could not have been Cowbridge, right? But because of the evidence that they found after the nineteen seventies, we now establish uh, that Cowbridge is in fact Bovium. But the 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 problem exists with it's mentioned on something called the Antonine Itinerary. And the Antonine itinerary um, was was um, a charter defining uh, where um, military stations were across the Roman Empire. It was like a guide to um, the Roman military world. Um, and that would basically say that, for example, um, uh, Bovium as being 15 Roman miles from Neath and 27 miles from Isca Kalian. And the Royal Commission on Ancient Monuments recently chose a site two kilometres south of Bregend, i.e. near Ueni, as the most likely candidate for the lost fort. But the Cowbridge discovery swing the pendulum back to Cowbridge. Um, it can only be hoped that aerial photography or excavation will one day prove the existence of a fort um, um, which is more substantially marked um, than we know so far um, in regards to the Arthur John car park information that we might actually look at today. No evidence was observed for occupation between then. So what we've got is roughly between um, the late 300s all the way to maybe the 1200s, 30, um, 1200s um, early 1200s, um, the evidence in Cowbridge disappears, which is quite odd, except then we come to um, here. And this um, is one of the, um, this is a reconstructed uh, um, um, sort of medieval jug, which which is quite ornate. There would have been a handle on this naturally. And th this being found um, is, is of great note um, in regards to this site. Now, what we've got directly built um, within, above these ruins, right, is this building. Right, it's a it's a medieval and post medieval building. Now, 
And this would have inevitably fronted onto the main high street. And it's quite likely that this would have been um, at one stage a pub in Cowbridge. Except if you look at the history of Cowbridge, you will realise that Cowbridge probably had dozens and dozens of taverns and pubs. Right. And usually what would happen is that um, the landlady, um, as her husband was out doing something else or running the local tannery or whatever he was doing, um, she would make a little bit of extra money on the uh, side by having um, a huge barrel at the front of the property where people would go past with their own flagon, um, hand over some goods or a penny. Uh, which would have been a lot of money for a, a flagon of, of, of beer back in the medieval period, but there they would have been some exchange. Um, and that would have been an extra source of making money. It, w it wouldn't have been a penny because a penny would have been a, a daily wage for a labourer back then. So um, unless they were desperate. So um, so this this building itself dates to, to the 1300s. And um, a building dating to the 1300s um, it is... Is naturally fascinating for us, and and it tells that sometime um, in a in the in, in roughly the um, roughly in the middle part of the twelve hundreds, um, there's a charter that that tells us that uh, Cowbridge became a borough. Um, I used to have the precise date. I think it's roughly around the twelve fifties or somewhere like that. Um, interest in the site awakened um, with the construction of a townhouse or shop which was to stand subject to only minor changes for nearly 500 years and prov um, provide much of the fabric for its successor, which stood for another two centuries. So obviously the building placed on top of this this one, um, you can see there that you've got the medieval building and then you've got the post-medieval building where it fronts more onto the front. And the original building um, was, was uh, 15 metres in length, which is quite a sizable building really. Um, five and a half meters wide, which is basically more or less the width of the building that I'm in now, was constructed of limestone blocks bonded with distinctive orange mortar. Right, so it was rendered on the outside. It stretched back from the street frontage in much the same way as the Roman examples, its predecessor. Recognizable features including that they found there evidence of an archway, uh, uh, windows, um, various other bits and pieces, and individual rooms. The building has been tentatively described as a merchant's house, um, and as such um, would have contained a large front to the shop, as I've already described, to undertake the merchant's business and to undertake the rest of uh, the life, and obviously the family life would have been to the rear of the building. Um, and there, another feature, probably of medieval date, was a well located to the rear of the building. So they found a well as well. Well mm -hmm. as well. Um, and local residents could remember it being filled in a few years ago. But excavation suggested that it was first dug in the medieval period and several sherds of green glazed pottery were recovered um, from its construction, which would have been very likely would have come from over the water um, or would have been made at a kiln probably near Cowbridge, um, not Cowbridge, Cosmaston, which we've got a green type of glazed pottery which which when I, as I'm writing my reports of of my own field work I've come across this type of green glazed pottery across most of the Vale of Gamorgan so it must it may have actually been produced locally as well um so post medieval building then then you've got the post medieval building dating from 1770 which was in fact demolished in 1977 to build um to 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 build the um the, the bank that would need footings that discovered this site and hence why we're doing this today um it's so even the building from the 1770s um, had architectural merit and preserved on the original alignment on the east and the west as the the medieval building um the full ground plan was recovered and it's very interesting we've got the full ground plan um and and that's basically where that story goes today. So thanks, thanks would have been given to um, to the the owners of the building um, and uh, the site to, permission to excavate. This was at the time that that um, archaeological excavation in the main wasn't a prerequisite of 
plan and control. But um, you know, archaeologists were working there. They had they had money put into the project from the manpower services scheme, um, and you know, lots lots of more genuine archaeological work was undertaken when the manpower services scheme uh, was funding these projects because they weren't reliant on on the owners um, and they weren't reliant upon, for example, the owner saying, you know, you've got to move on, you've got to do things quickly. Or, of, or as I found in my own professional career, landowners saying, oh, by the way, can we dig over there whilst you're off site, whilst we've got a meal waiting for you on site um, and lots to drink? knowing full well that over there there is something that i've just discovered um uh, um, when and uh, naturally i'd carry on with my work eating my chips or food or whatever they've bought but uh, but the fact of the matter is when it's funded by um government um th there's there's more range to get things done without any corruption right so um well actually what i thought this would this was interesting i i thought maybe what i'm going to do um is move a little bit off the kitty and then we're going to go at the end to to the likes of, um, oh God, I can't get my bloody words out, to the likes of St. Nicholas Church. So I, I actually thought this would, would interest all of us today, to be honest with you. And this is in regards to um, Cardiff Castle. Right, so so what what we've got is this um, one th one thing that that people are not aware of um, is that the Roman site of Cardiff was actually built at least four times, um, and you can you can see there that you've got Castle Street, Duke Street, High Street, um, and you, then you've got um, uh, you you've got the the wall um of cardiff which is which is the modern wall the the uh, this hang on start again this here is the wall that was discovered by the third marquis of butte um and work to rebuild um on top of that wall and the the outline of modern day cardiff castle on, on directly on top of the roman wall um, that was undertaken by the architect William Burgess. And actually, if you look at um, the frontage of Cardiff, this area here um, is to be found as a grey limestone um, outlined by a red rather sandstone directly on top of that. And then you've got the walls um, of Cardiff as reconstructed by William Burgess. He thought to the original heights of the Roman walls, which which are a li little bit more um, 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 extreme. And interesting on, on here as well, um, hang on, get rid of that. Interesting on here um, is the street, um, um, it's a Pipsk, Pipsk uh, Way, uh, which is obviously, that's obviously been renamed now, Pipsk, Pipsk, Pipsk Way, can't even say it, on the right there. Um, and that would then take you, um, if you go down along there, it would take you to... Um, um the 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 main areas and the museum and so on so you get an idea that so this fourth fort was the last fort um which would have been half the size of the original fort which was actually ex um constructed at cardiff so so i just wanted to mention this as going way out of our area but i thought this would interest some of us so what they did they they undertook excavations um and they, they found out that the original fort um, w was was very extensive. Um, the more the more modern one that you can st still see there today, the, the fourth fort um, is less as extensive as the earlier one. So the earliest fort work on the first fort, um, um, you know, nobody knew where it was until they started excavating there in the 1970s. And I'll tell you one thing as well. One interesting fact is that they found so much Roman Samian ware from the excavations at Cardiff that they were still processing them and still looking at the Roman Samian ware, thousands, tens of thousands of, of samples of Roman Samian ware, way up until uh, the 2000s uh, with, with uh, Dr. Peter Webster. They were still looking at it. It's a massive, massive amount of material. 
Um, and it's likely that the earliest fort, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of breaking this down, sort of moving through this a bit quicker. Uh, were, the fort itself was a 30 acre fort, a massive fort, and they found lots of coins, lots of pottery dating the earliest fort at Cardiff to roughly just before 60 AD. So it was really, really early. So the second fort itself, we know about the second fort that that comes in um with that that as you can see on the plan there a much smaller fort right um with 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 deep ditches with with very uh, proud gateways and so on um and then you've got the third fort there which which is a little bit which is it's probably a, um which is actually slightly smaller than the third um uh, but follows the original frontage um, and what we what we now know is that the civilian settlement from the archaeological evidence, the civilian settlement built up um, around the um, uh, the third fort. Um, and we know that they were working bronze. Again, fascinating for all of us, for, for us is what we see today. So the fourth fort, um, it's likely that, that that occupation at Cardiff ran all the way through the Roman era. If you get a copy of my Romans in South Wales, you'll see that. Um, and you've you've got um, you, you've got this this wonderful fort that runs into the four hundreds, um, and is 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 hugely um, is 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 hugely interesting when we think about the archaeology. Um, and what what we've got here um, is that within this. Um, Within the earlier, um, with start again, start again. Within the later fort, right? Uh, what you've got is they they've excavated evidence of uh, these buildings within, um, and what you've got here is evidence of a cobbled uh, roadway, which is that there that they found, um, and then later on within that, you you've got these medieval buildings. Which and, and what happens in the medieval period, they they make the bestest use um, of uh, the, the 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 original defences of the Roman fort. And actually, the the material that I'm 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 sort of divulging at this minute in the plans. This is this is associated with uh, Peter Webster. Um, this is from the 1970s. So he's so dedicated to his work that he's still working on it. Um, you know, 35 years later, we do that. So so what we are going to do next is this. And uh, this is all familiar to us, very, very much familiar to us. And um, what we're going to do now is I like coming back. I, I, I like coming back to. I, I like coming back to this site. Um, and then then after this. We look at this site. Right, which is the the Arthur John car park site. I just make sure that I'm 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 going through this. Oh yeah, we still got to do Saint Nicholas Church. We can't. We've got, still got a little bit to go yet. So anyway, back to this plan. So let's just just go to this. And as I say, even even if you went through to Arquilio or Covline, um, lots of the information that I'm giving you today, you're not going to find online. So um, the stuff that we're going to be doing from now onwards is stuff that is not off the internet at all um this is in most of this is taken from um um archive publications that i've got here again um this this the site of glanham moor um as as i've given talks on this before I've, I've got very very fond memories of this and we know it was discovered first by uh, the very late and eminent uh, Howard Thomas, um, and further excavations were carried out in advance of masonry, reconsolidation and landscaping as were di was directed mainly at the south side of the building, which was not fully explored in 1980. Um, and this this um, this report is actually dated 1981. So what they did, they after they had uncovered a big chunk of this site, they decided moving south. To, towards the back of the toilets that you've got there. Um, and two further internal walls were located, bringing a total um, of rooms to 22. Um, and, you know, what we've got is that's one of the internal walls between Q and P. And what is rather interesting on here 
is the word tile dump, material dumped at the site um, as they decommissioned this site. This was a site that didn't fall into ruins. It was a site that was deliberately demolished by the Romans themselves. Um, we, 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 we know that the site itself um, was originally uh, built sometime in the 100s. It was then rebuilt in the uh, latter part of the 200s. And what what we've got then is they started to work out directly where this other building was that was destroyed in the 1960s. What we do find, which which is of uh, equal interest to us, um, is if we can um, move in here a little, little bit and move out. OK, so if we, if we look there, there's the letter um, N, right? and the letter P. So N and P, right? So N and P um, are interesting. So what we find about N and P is that um, a backfilled foundation trench showed that rooms N and P had been enlarged at the expense of what had been there before. So they extended these, these rooms for whatever reasons. On the south side of the building, here we go, was fronted a veranda wall, retain, retaining wall, which included decorative um, courses of pebble, which you can still see there today. Um, this had collapsed outwards directly onto the construction levels, showing that the building must have been demolished very shortly after mm -hmm. completion or even before. Some, the, the, I, 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 I'm, I, I discuss that this site is not really completed um and as they're just given the key to uh, one of the doors on the site they basically said we've got to demolish it right um and i and I, i'll tell you the logic in that in a, in a few moments which we'll, we'll just we'll just move on just a moment um and just out down there that's where the the board is right in the left hand corner which is occasionally updated even fewer finds were made um than previous in 1980. But examination of the pottery has so far progressed as to be able to suggest a date um, that we've got um, into um, the late 200s and maybe some activity in the early 300s for the construction of the site. Um, and what happens in the 300s is the site is extensively robbed for its material which is bearing on the next thing that we're going to do, not the next thing, um, the, the, the thing at the end, because we've got to do Arthur John's car park. Um, a radiocarbon date of AD 565 to AD 695 um, indicates that room B, which is there, was actually reoccupied. Right, so room B was reoccupied. Um, very interesting. So within the ruins of the building, that that building B was reoccupied. And then what we've got is that we've got a, um, a round cornered building, which was constructed um, in the southwestern area of the courtyard. So um, southwestern area there, another building, they found the remains directly on the rubble there. Now, um, we're not gonna go into precise detail, but I will tell you, that we know that the site was demolished. Why? Because they they found they, they found evidence of a coin dating before the 280s. And then they found a coin dating to the 280s in sort of building rubble that was used to build the site. And then they found in the demolition rubble, they found a coin dating to I, I think roughly around the 300s, right? Um, and that means that the the building was constructed, the coin evidence before the 280s. Uh, in the building rebel, we, we've got um, a, a coin dating the building. And then you've got the backfill, the demolition rubble, which has a coin dating the demolition of the building. Right. And the other piece of evidence is quite simple. They actually found a trowel at the site as well. Um, a, 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 a builder's trowel that, that looks very similar to a modern day trowel, to be honest with you. Uh, not not a normal four inch trowel an archaeologist would use though, and um, and uh, and and they found a piece of pottery I think with the name Doodles on it, um, which indicates 
a potter that was directly responsible for making that pot. Um, and um, the the other piece of evidence is is that they didn't find any Roman um, columns. They they didn't find a Roman bathhouse. There might still be a Roman bathhouse over there where the N is, but we don't know. That's no that was never explored. Probably unlikely to be on the left or the north because it sort of rises. The land rises. Um, it's not going to be underneath um, uh, that astrologer's ex home um, who used to live there. Um, and um, so, so we and, and lots of it, the, the walls. We don't find render on the walls to the usual standard which you've got paintings on there uh, as far as i know they didn't find any mosaic pieces there so if as an official building it would have had all those things and we don't find them so that material was likely to have been taken away so what what we're going to do now we're going to go a bit closer home to cowbridge um to to pretend i would say for Anne, for Anne's benefit and um and Anne, you're late Anyway, Anne, what was the problem? As I'm, as I'm trying to find, um, why didn't you uh, my wife? I was not. <laughs> I oh. wasn't. On, I wasn't online. And sometimes I'm going to call you a loon, and this is one of those occasions. Well, the thing is, um, we, have this, we have this routine, and Joe usually puts the telly and the Wi-Fi on when he gets up. Right, but we didn't of course, today. he's got a thing against the Wi-Fi, so he didn't turn it off today. <laughs> well, it's got conspiracy theory against the Wi-Fi. Yeah. So. Right, look, and it, it paints your husband on. as being a loon. Yeah, carry on. Yeah, we do, we we only want you as a loon in that house, not not your husband. Right, so um, and you know where the Arthur John car park is at the back here, at the back of the town hall. Yeah. Yes. Right. So directly underneath the car park, um, and the remains I do believe are still there, um, is, is this building. And it, it's it's um it um actually the phasing there isn't too clear. It's actually phase one, phase two, phase three. Um no, phase one and phase two are the same colour, so you can't really what's going out there. Um pay phase um phase um three. Are these buildings here, K, L, and M, um, and um, what you've got then is um, then after phase three, you've got phase three B. I think it's very confusing. This is you've got more buildings towards the north, um, northwest, um, and you've got another phase of of building which is. Hang on. Oh, there, there. No, it's not. I can't find it. But anyway, uh, this. Oh yeah, these ditches. Yeah, these the, these gullies over here, um, drainage gullies that are put in. Um, the river's really nearby as well. And mm -hmm. one thing, one thing, the the, the diverted river, um, is is about. Um, hang on, let me work this out. The maths is about twenty five thirty meters away towards the east. But the original river would have been about um 70 80 meters towards the east uh but this is really interesting that it's still there so mm. so the remains of a substantial 13 room building were excavated this was constructed of mortared limestone with occasional use of sandstone blocks on corners and roofed with tile and guess what they found they found more of these they found more tiles bearing the um, the impression of the Legion Second Augusta, which clearly means mm. that 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 building there was actually built by the Roman legionaries at Cowbridge Bovium underneath the Arthur John car park. Mm. Um, unfortunately, within the walls of these buildings, no floor levels have survived. Um, no. So we don't have you know, we, we don't have. Um, mosaics and stuff, but remains of the concrete subfloor um, of the two hypercore suites uh, were found. So there, there, there was a hypercore system that that's hypercore systems there. So they were found, and then basically that there is the furnace area, right? Um, so Neil Oliver's just put a message up. Um, so, so basically, uh, what we've got 
is then you've got all the rest of the buildings there, a nice sort of uh, length of buildings, typically Roman. Um, and, and what we do find is that the, the rooms um, B, C, D and E uh, were probably constructed roughly about 100 years AD. Um, and rooms, um, it's saying then um, that other bits of the building were demolished in the 120s towards B um, and A was demolished. Um, and it's very likely as well, it's very likely that this, this by about the 120s, the Roman legionaries had moved out of the town, right? Um, because they weren't needed in South Wales, because as as the native population was just a basic a rollover, um, they didn't need a military presence here at all. Um, and it would be a, a very much a peaceful area um, all the way into the 400s. Um, there's very little sign that the local population resisted um, Roman um, rule at all. Um, so what we then have is we've we've got evidence of burials roughly in the area of the bees there, B2. Um, and that's that's interesting in itself, um, which is mm. odd, really. So so what what we what we've got then is that they they then moved the area of um they, they then moved the hypercore system, probably because it was quite damp up here because they put these drainage ditches much later on. But uh, M is where you've got the new hypercore system uh, feeding these buildings L, feeding the rooms L, K, R, and and so on. Um, so so this is going into the 100. So it's likely somebody um, decided that we're going to have a we're going to have a civilian bathhouse for for relatively small population mm -hmm. in Cowbridge. And and what what we then have is over here we've got all these drainage channels, and it's obviously indicating that the the site becomes extremely damp due to flooding. And this is why you've got these drainage ditches. Um, and interestingly then, what you have um, is that by the, by the um, I think the dates here, um, you, you've obviously got, you, you've got children's burials there. You've got adult burials within um, the area of the bathhouse. Um, it's and it's likely sometime in about the 200s. Um, uh, the building um, is slowly being stripped of its building material um, by the civilians because it was probably very, very damp um, uh, to have this bathhouse here. Um, you know, it, it's lot. Some other people argue that it's not a, a military bathhouse, but with hypercore systems. And rooms clearly indicating that um, bathing's going on here. I can't think what else it could be. Um, so that's still there. So the evidence is is actually still there. Now, the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to bring me back on the screen. So unfortunately, Peter, you're going to have to look at have to look at my ugly face. Sorry, Pete. Uh, mm. I, I, I'm getting the knife in before Peter says it. You know, he says, "Look at my hair." Yeah, I, I got to get all the insults in. Uh, Pete, I know I got terrible hair. I'm an ugly looking bugger, right? But at least I got hair, Pete. You haven't. Right. Do you know what? I am so cruel. I really am. I really am. Right. So what we're going to... Can't, we can't hear him speaking either because he's muted himself. That's even better. Right. Okay. So we're, we're going to do the last thing here. And this is going to be very interesting for me and Richard for reasons that me and Richard know. And we're not going to say any more. So Richard, this this date from... is in my nesting box. Are you referring to me as a tit as well? He's put some <laughs> messages in. Is he? No, he hasn't. He's saying he's got tits in his garden. Oh, nice! Yeah. Oh, they're so sweet. Little mm -hmm. tiny first first. They're year nesting in the nesting day. box. The tits are the, the tits are in the mm -hmm. nesting box. Yeah. Mm. Must be their first year. Maybe. No, it's not. They've been nesting there for years. Oh, no, I mean, yep. tiny. They're tiny at the moment, the blue tits, and I think they're like the first years. Do you know what, Anne? Right? They've always you know been tiny. Do you know what? I've never been. Doing a lecture on... <laughs> oh, look, look, stop talking about tits, right? We're supposed to be doing a lecture on archaeology, okay? <laughs> All you right. could talk about 
and and you can talk about tits when I do my live class in Barry. You, you're not going to anyway, so don't worry about it. Right, so um, we're going to mention quickly um, this thing here that was published in 1997. It was published by Howard Thomas, right, and it's concerning St. Nicholas Church. I got a skivvy in here to brush the floor. Church so that's good. in where Barry? Yeah, in Barry. Yeah, the church in Barry, the one opposite the, the the hall that you used to go to with Tina. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Uh, right, Barry St Nicholas Churchyard. An archaeological investigation was commissioned in 1998 by the All Saints Parochial Church Council in respect of a proposal to rebuild the church cross which had been greatly damaged by subsidence. The structure comprised a socket stone placed on a three steps dating to the 1400s with a base um, of 2.5, um, um, two and a half metres. Um, I That must be in diameter. Um, the present cross shape, together with the head in the form of a cross, um, enclosed an heraldic, Fleur de Lis design in high relief, erected in 1894, um, as after a visit by Lloyd George. The bottom step was found to be of the original medieval fabric. Beneath this, the earliest layer identified was a surface of clay soil to serve by medieval burials, which were marked by three pitched blocks of local Lias limestone. This service was dated by pottery shirts dating from the 12 to the 1300s. The ancient graveyard surface had been partially covered by a dump of Roman building debris composed of mortar um, particles mixed with tile chippings. Analysis of the mortar samples show that the material had to have been robbed from the ruins of the Roman building at Glanimor had to have been robbed. I'm not saying any more. These tiles had been trimmed off the adhering mortar, which was discarded and then crushed up into gravel-sized pieces. The purpose of this recycling was, was evidently to provide a flooring of crushed tile to the interior of the parish church, which would have presented a distinctively red appearance. There occurred a subsequent accumulation of clay soil upon which was deposited a thin lens of slate particles resulting from the dressed process when the church acquired a roof of Cornish slate in the 1400s. Cornish slate from mid Wales. Oh. <laughs> no, Cornish slate from Cornwall land. God's sake. <laughs> the cross base was erected in the 1400s and the, the work being carried out at the same time as the chancel was rebuilt from the foundations due to subsidence. The bottom foundation um, course was placed directly on the ground surface and was largely constructed of broken sepulchre slabs of 1200s date instead of freshly quarried stone. These slabs had been plundered from the floor of the chancel where they marked sites of high status burials, probably the deep barries of Barry Castle. Maybe. So these these stones, you know, maybe slabs to do with the De Barry family. I think that's probably the first time I've read that anywhere. So I'm not sure if you've come across that, uh, Peter. Uh, and uh, Richard, start again. The sepulchre slabs were mistakenly identified as altar slabs in a previously previous provisional examination. And the conclusion reached that uh, then that the cross was of... Um, there's a date, there's something here. The cross was of Marian date, can no longer be supported. I've no idea what that means. Marian, Marian date. Is Mary. What does that mean? It's something Mary to do with Catholic Catholicism. That's the first time I've come across that. And I really appreciate that. And um, so we've been called Marian, M A R I A N. Mary? Yeah, I think it's like to do with churches uh, dating. Uh... As, as, yeah, as, as, as you would say, Benedictine uh, or Cistercian, Marian. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Yeah. 
The masonry of the cross steps were mortared only on the outside skin of facing stones, the core being made of a waste demolition debris derived from the chancel rebuilding, which included pieces of a discarded early window from the 1200s, a lancet window, which is one of those um, tall, thin build, uh, windows. Um, the investigation was followed up by a small research excavation about uh, against the churchyard boundary located 12 metres southeast of the cross. Here it was found that a shallow ditch um, had been levelled off with debris from the demolition of the medieval church in 1874. So there'd been a ditch there uh, that had been backfilled with debris from the church that had been demolished uh, by the Romney family. Um, and 18, hang on a minute. The demolition was 1870, 1876, wasn't it, Richard? Anyway, moving on. This 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 fill in the ditch that he, uh, Howard Thomas excavated, this fill contained broken pieces of Roman tile. Again, more Roman tile. Where's this Roman tile coming from? Cornish Frufin slate and fragments of ridge tile, glazed ridge tile from the 1400s. On top of the destruction layer was a dump of clay and rubble debris from grave digging, which produced three fragments of um, of of um, ornate material from the 1400s. Uh, they they found out that there was um, uh, a lithic limestone, which was associated with material that come from Bath, um, and they're saying that um, that they found other building materials associated um, with um, the structure of the church dating back to the 13, 1400s. and that's thanks to Howard Thomas's um, ex excavations there um, in. 1997 so on that note um that's me done for today and uh that's been that's been quite intense um so i'm gonna find out so again um and don't forget the, the money's this for next month at 25 pounds if you can get that over to me uh richard uh peter's already said that uh that he, he would pay his money immediately because he loves me um <laughs> And uh, and so what we're going to do is more of this next week. And we're going to do more of these types of reports, which is, um, you know, that that's that's what we're going to do. So um, so um, I've got um, I'm, I'm going to have to. Um, well, we, we, we've come to the end. So any questions from you, Anne? Um, I was qu no question so much as. Um... I just, you know, feedback on things you were saying, like, um, you know, when they had the big barrel outside the shop and uh, in the medieval yeah. shop, was it? And, oh, you um, got that people, bit. I didn't know you'd got that bit. Right, uh, go on. People would fill their flagons up for, you know, wherever, yes. they, wherever they got. And um, yes. it, was remind, it just reminded me last night, they were talking about Glasgow, and the gorbals, you know, the cumbernol uh, and cumbernols and places like that. I was in the UK. And um, the kids used to go to the cinema and they'd take a jam jar and they'd pay to go to the cinema with the jam jar because that, uh, it was they were very um, valuable. Oh. Glass was very valuable. And that was only in the, that was in the 40s. And I actually, actually, I'm directly on top of that. I, I used to um, that there was I, I, I there was a woman that I did some work with in the 1990s. And she was a health visitor in Cardiff. <laughs> and she said I, I was so shocked by this. I, I, I couldn't work it out at the time because, you know, you know, my my parents. Right. You know, um, they're very affluent and so on. And and they said to me that in it, what they used to drink out in in. In, on the docks in Cardiff were tin yeah. cans, and oh, she, yeah. she, yeah. she she said she said to me, I was quite shocked by this. I couldn't couldn't understand yeah. it because I, I I'd never lived in that world. Um, mm. She she said to me that um, when you'd go into these houses, these people were so poor that mm. if they offered you a cup of tea in in a in a in a jam metal jam. can, oh, okay. um, you would feel obliged to um, not yeah. not a jam jar, but a metal can. You were obliged oh, to drink right. out of it because that's all they had. Yeah. Um, mm. and, and and I was quite shocked by that. So when you mention a jam jar, <laughs> and again, 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 it's that it's that um, in the medieval period, you know, they don't have 
you know, you, you, you're going to have to bring your own flag in along, you know, that's yeah. it. Or, yeah. or, 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 or drink oh, out yeah. of the I mean, skin, I think, you know. I think we used to do that in the Victorian times as well. But, um, you know, that was, that was just, <laughs> just shows you that people were very poor. You know, they were very I poor. I remember getting money on jam jars. Hmm? I remember so getting money on jam jars. Oh, you got money on them. Yeah, well, apparently glass was very um, valuable. You know, it wasn't. Yep. So you say well, yes. if, if they were actually. Well, yes, old things, glass bottles were returned. Old milk bottles were returned for, uh, yeah, for refilling true, it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Pop bottles, etc. Remember pop bottles? Yeah, we used to collect pop bottles. Pop bottles yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. the few pennies on them, yeah. Can I, can, yeah. Can can I just jump in here? Can sure? I jump in here at the right time? Because um, um, Peter's uh, Peter, this is wrong for me to say this, but I'm going to go with this is what Peter means. The, it, it seems that Peter's mm. indicating that today the value of glass is is very low. However, he's probably not saying that at all. Um, but I want to put, put a fourth penneth. When I was working for the council um, in my guise as a pirate, and then obviously when I was no longer a pirate, I was working on refuge. When we go to the council um refuge site um all the stuff that, that we were recycling uh i was then told that it would just go to landfill so we we would um put fines on people's bags for um for you know not recycling their stuff when it was all going to the landfill so i said this is disgusting and he said oh we, we're just doing it because we've been told by the welsh assembly we're given the impression that everything's recycled and it's not and i said okay what well, you can't say that for the glass and he said actually the glass is extremely valuable right um you know we don't tell we don't let the public know that the glass is the value that it is yeah. and we we get for one ton they get four grand right so um, glass is is still extremely valuable, but they give the impression to us that it's not right. Uh, so Cause yeah, because they're trying to make us use plastic, I think, instead of glass. But now it's backfired on us, hasn't it? it exactly, exactly. You know? Because we, we we can't recycle it, and and there's no real recycling going yeah. on in Wales. It's just not. And and uh, but 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 anyway, the point is the point that Kate and Ruth were saying, Peter and and Anne. And and that this thing about having disposable cups and so on is is an anathema, right? Mm. Uh, and, and it's something that only a, a hundred years ago you would have had to have taken your own mug in with you. Yeah. Right. Anything else from you, Anne? Oh, the other thing was I just um, I understood you said uh, there were there wasn't any uh, prehistory found in Cowbridge so far. And uh, I thought, well, that's pretty, that stands to reason, really, doesn't it? Because of what yeah. we've just been talking about, the river flooding. And, um, and, and we all know where the, where the forts are, the Iron Age forts are, and they're all up on higher ground, aren't they? You know, yeah. so Cowbridge is down in the dips, isn't it? But you never know. We might it, find it, some it, prehistory it, there. <laughs> The, 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 the problem, the pro probably, probably I'm going to say this: prehistoric people were probably wiser than the Roman builders, and I think uh, Peter, uh, Peter would agree. Um, the, the prehistoric people knew a lot more um, than we give them credit for. Yeah. They, they knew how to build trackways in the right mm. places. They, they knew how to build their settlements, mm. um, and they knew what to build with. They, they knew, for example, building a structure out of stone um, in in a boggy landscape was pointless. You build with timber. Mm -hmm. Off, raised off the ground and so on so anything yeah. else Anne? no that's all thank you it was interesting right yes thank you Very anything more any, thank you Anne. anything from you peter well we have a recycling bin for glass now uh yeah. here, here in barry we have the three separate containers for recycling a yeah. blue one for plastic a yeah. white one for paper and a brown one for cardboard and a separate glass container yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. With the authority, separate everything in that way, and mm -hmm. it's, it's put in separate uh, sections of the uh, waste recovery vehicle. Well, I don't. It has, it has separate sections for uh, the, the various uh, uh, items like glass, mm -hmm. paper, uh, and uh, plastic, etc. Well, they must be definitely recycling glass. You know, even they, they are because it's valuable glass. You know. It's valuable. Mm. Yeah, food recycling goes to, to compost. 
Yeah. Uh, but 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 weirdly enough, the mm-hmm. food recycling down this end actually this is this is what really gets my head right. Um, when I'd be working for the council, the the types of things people were chucking out, they would throw whole bin bags of loaves of bread out, right? And I was thinking I could feed this to my animals, and they they would, mm-hmm. and and then yeah. they would take it to they would take it to this area, right? And I'd say, hang on a minute, what is that used for? And they'd say, oh, that's picked up by a company that dries it out using a furnace. And then that's put into chips to then go back into the furnace to heat more stuff up to be burnt. And I'm thinking, why do you use food waste to burn it? And it just doesn't make any sense. But I, I, yeah, I think uh, the stuff in the Vale of Morgan is actually recycled. Uh, uh, it's actually put on the ground. So the Vale of Morgan's got a different way of looking at this. Anyway, Peter, anything else? No, no, that's more or less it. Right. As Richard gets his mic on, anything from you, Ruth? No, nothing. I just won't recycle. Oh, I thought of some news. What? I thought of some news. Go for it. Won't recycle? Who said no. that? No. And no, a, a new housing estate next Go to Asmiston. I haven't got no room for the bags in my place. Hang, 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 hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Yeah, I, I, Ruth can't recycle because she hasn't got room to recycle all the different stuff. Right. Okay. Back to that cake. They, they, they found a Roman building at Cosmaston. No, they're building um, houses. They're going to build more houses there. Yeah. Another big estate next to it. Um, I'm, 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 I'm well aware, and I'm well aware of the fact that most of the archaeology will not be devolved, de- devolved, mm-hmm. um, and offered for um, public knowledge. So, uh, right, but okay. Anyway, I'm, thanks for I'm that. I'm staying in the Kylian. Um, I'm staying in the Kylian um, castle. Oh, cool. Nice. We, we want the photographs. Because I've on never been VW, inside there. On the VW, um, we're all camping there. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, good. We, I hope it's we, dried we, out. We oh, want some good. photographs. We want some photographs. Okay. Um, well, any, anything, any, anything else from you, Kate, before we go on to Richard? No. Oh, just wanted to ask you, the, uh, so was Bovium under Augustus? Um. But Bo- Bovium, um, Bo- Bovium, oh, no, right, Bo- Bovium as in bovine, as in cow, as the place of the cow. Yeah, but I'm thinking of when, when. Oh, the, it... the, the 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 name the the name we're talking about the Antonine itinerary, and I, if I give you the date of the Antonine itinerary, I think it's in about the 150s. I'm just going to have a quick look. I, I've published this, so hang on a minute. Let's give you the date. So the Anton nine. Says... Itinerary. Nary. The Antonine itinerary was roughly, if I can get it up on my phone, I think it was in the 150s that they wrote that, but um, it's directly linked to the place rather than an emperor. So, right. I was thinking from... the name of the legion was Augusta ah, or something or something. Ah, yeah. right. Uh, the legion, uh, the second Augusta legion. It was. <laughs> it was to be enshrined as emperor, the first uh, emperor Augustus, which is twenty-eight years BC. Which is, in other yeah. words, the, the original name was Octavian. Yes. yes. I. I was, it, it was going it, to. It, it was the was second to... Augusta legion. There was a first Augusta. This is the second. Right. Um. Anyway, anything so else came named after him rather than it being under him. And named after him, enshrining him rather than yeah. Cool. So nice. they, 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 there was a Kate. first and second. Hang on, Anna May Kate. Anything else, Kate? That's all. Thanks. Right, and quickly, and we'll do. I was thinking we'll of Kate on Monday. I bet she was really uh, quite surprised and distressed by that uh, bridge uh, and the in Maryland. Yeah. You know, the Baltimore Bridge. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's quite sad, and and the absolute stupidity I of of. Enjoy watching it. <laughs> no, I, tell, I tell you what, the absolute I, stupidity I of. I think of her watching but, it. You know, from, it might not um, have been an accident. Just saying. Uh, yeah, but, there but, is but, war but, going but, on after all. They don't declare it, but there's war going on. Been going on a while, huh? Yeah, I was good. Yeah, I I should really email. I should text you because uh, yeah, right. that's what okay. I yeah, okay. yeah. Anyway, yeah. anyway, anyway, let let's move on, on Sorry, from that Richard. because it might be it might be more controversial than you think. So um, I I don't want to cause any problems, Richard. Uh, not really interesting. Um, 
Yeah, interesting subject. So, yeah. I was going to say as well, Kathy is supposed to be here next week. So apparently your sister's down for Easter. So that's why yeah. she's not on today. Yeah, she said me that. She'd be on next week. So she sent me that message. I, I, I had been telling everybody that um, Anne had upset Kathy, but that's obviously not true. So don't worry about it. <laughs> um, that's right. It. So, <laughs> so what we're going to do? Um, I will see you all tonight. Um, I won't see Peter tonight, but uh, Peter, can I ask you something? Last night was a little bit more. Um, I don't know. It, it, it seemed a bit. Was it too academic last night, or was it okay? No, it was okay last night. No. Well, okay. Oh, I, 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 I felt... am surprised. Peter I, I... stays up. Uh, Peter up. stays up. <sighs> Peter stays up out oh. of bed. Shut up, Anne. Um, anyway. <laughs> what the hell is she on about? <sighs> it's I don't, I, I, I've started I, I, to stay up later and later. Yeah. Anne, what well, are you on about? It, Peter's at 10 o'clock. <laughs> oh right. Well, yeah, I think he went on laugh past actually, but <laughs> yeah, but, but but yeah, yeah. Look, 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 Pete, Pete, Pete's not an old man, right? He's still young at heart, right? So give him a bloody break, for God's sake! I know. Right. Bed till after eleven. I know he's very yeah. with it. I know he's very with it because he's got a young daughter. He's got. And a... I think I think you should hey? stop making an ass of yourself. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go now. I got I you this right. afternoon. Uh, look, Pete's got a smile on his face. You haven't upset him, right? Okay, then. Um, on that note, <laughs> uh, can I can I ask everyone a question? A joke. Right? Can I ask everyone a question? Right? And this is a question aimed at you, right? Um, um if if a if a bloke um hasn't hasn't had sexual relations for a while, um, does their down below ache? Ache? You know. Yeah. I don't think so. I'll ask Tim. I don't know. <laughs> he's, he's laughing. <laughs> right. On that note, we're going to call it a day. Pete, I'll see you next week. Okay. Richard, I'll see you tonight. And Anne and anybody else, thank you for joining us today. Anyway, goodbye, Peter, Richard, <laughs> Anne, Kate, and Ruth. And we'll see you next week and tonight. Bye. Take care. Bye. Okay, bye. 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 Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye. And actually, so. a, a, actually, Anne, you've got to say ball sack, but I didn't want to embarrass the boys because they were very embarrassed by that. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, it is something like that. But, but know, they're ball there sack. There <laughs> Yeah, I, I think, Ruth, you'll, need, you'll have to get us the answer from Tim next week. On that I note... Know. Uh, uh, right, and, and one, la one last thing for you two, right? Um, him if, if he doesn't do anything this, this weekend, he's coming down, I'm going to get a shag, buddy. <laughs> You're going to get a shag, you buddy? Oh, You're oh, going to get a I, shag, buddy. I've had that trouble for years. <laughs> You've had that trouble for years, right? Okay, right, okay. I have. Okay. I have two, right, so Dan. Too many. Yeah. Uh, too many snakes. Uh, right. Okay. Right. Okay, That's yeah, a I'll go right? now. Bye bye. I think you. I think you better add on. Right. And bye -bye. Uh, one thing, try uh, One thing, Ruth and um, Kathy. I'm trying to keep um, uh, because because uh, because three of them are not going to be coming to the Barry uh, live thing. Right. So I, I've. Um, um, What's it, yeah. Barry live thing then? Well, no, not my not my bloody live show, but um, it's going to be last Thursday. It, right, uh, we're going to start on. We're going to do it. We're going to do it on Thursdays, right? And um, you know, it's going to be at the studio. At the studio, wow. So oh, uh, anyway, anyway, which is which is going to be separate from this. It's going to be a separate thing. So yeah. Okay. And anyway, we'll we'll have a chat about that closer to the time. Okay. Yeah. Okay, on that note, I'm going to call it a day. A day. <laughs> okay, then. take care, take care, Kate and Ruth. Give, I'll see you soon. Give give the little lambs a kiss from me. If I can get close to them. You can't get close to them, can you? M the mummies. Yeah, I can't even. Do you realise how fast they are? I do. Yeah, well, well, opposite yeah, of farm. Yeah, exactly. They're they're very fast, right? Particularly particularly when I'm shouting lamb chops. Anyway, um, it's on so that note, 
on, on that, no, that's no, that that's for that's for the adults. Yeah. Uh, any, anyway, I'll, uh, I'll I'll speak to you soon. Yeah, to our love. Take care. Bye. Bye. Yeah, bye. 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 Show me now. Do I get out of this? Just press the red button in the corner. That says end. Oh, leave. Is it? Yeah, leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, upstairs. Okay. Leave bye. Meeting. Leave me. I'm trying. Right, don't forget to like and subscribe on there. My live show details, the link will be down below when, I, when I've managed to get it up there. Thank you for watching today. I haven't been able to respond to anything online. And keep watching, keep supporting, and join. Thank you very much. And diolch varchi, golach yeto. Diolch. Bye-bye. Chat. Chat one, chat two, chat three, chat four.